Hey guys, welcome to Six Minutes for Tuesday, August 30th. I'm Jason Fulmore, uh, S.E. Russell, and today I had the opportunity to speak with um, new head coach, uh, new Montevallo head coach, uh, Daniel Ownby. Uh, coach Ownby um, gets the opportunity to, to create a program from the ground up. We are so excited in the state of Alabama and all across the Southeast to have um, a brand new D2 program uh, in the mix when we can cheer for and everything else. Um, Coach OMB and I talked, um, yeah, his, his taking the job, uh, what interested him about uh, University of Montevallo, and the fact that he has a year, a, a, you know, almost a year, and he, always, he already feels like he's kind of chasing, he's a little bit behind, that sort of thing. But uh, he's got a year to before they step on the mat. So I asked him about that. What what can we expect in the next year as far as uh, building out uh, that program and everything else? Uh, it was a blast to to talk to him. Had a, such a good time uh, learning about uh, what the University of Montevallo is looking to do uh, in starting uh, the program there. So, um, but before we get to that, I want to make sure that. Uh, I remind everybody, yesterday I dropped the, the highlight clips from Cars Chaos Duels. Um, took a lot of video. Make sure you go watch that if you, uh, if you get an opportunity, especially if you were there. Um, who knows? Maybe I got a clip of you doing something. Maybe I didn't. Um, but, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, tomorrow, Lucas De Silva, Fat and Scrappy's own, um, and I talk about the Super 32 qualifier this weekend in Ola. Um, and we did so by Zoom, um, and uh, yeah, we talk about it. It was a lot of fun, um, as it always is in our conversations uh, and when we get talking about wrestling. So check that out. On Thursday, I've got Coach Alex Moore from Harris County, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a blast having a conversation with him. Um, so busy week, um, but you're here today to talk about the university or to hear my conversation with Daniel Ownby of the University of Montevallo. Um, yeah, uh, make sure you get out and, uh, and support that program and support all of our college programs across the Southeast. Um, their ability to offer that really has a lot to do with our interest in watching and following them and cheering for their success. So um, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Coach Ownby. Here with Coach Ownby, new head coach at the University of Montevallo. Hey, Coach, how are things? I'm doing great. I'm doing Excellent. great. How are you doing? I'm doing great, too. How, uh, how is the uh, August heat in Alabama treating you since you're uh, – I know you are I know you get the southern roots, but you've been up a little bit north lately. Right. Um, I don't like the mosquitoes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that, my legs, after coming down from West Virginia, my legs are – or ate up and it's awful. I'm con consistently itching and I, I sort of miss not having mosquitoes, but I'm used to the heat being from Pembroke. Um, right. I mean, it, it, it gets pretty humid there. So yeah, I'm used to it. I just, I don't like the mosquitoes. Yeah. None, none of us do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for people who don't know, you, you've been at Wheeling, you've been at Newberry, Greensboro, um, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned Pembroke, that sort of thing. What was it about, the University of Montevallo's uh, universe, their job, that sort of thing, that made it appealing, that made you go, you know what, this, this is, this is my next stop. Um, the fact that they wanted to grow wrestling, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for growing wrestling. Period. And then we, if you look at the state of Alabama, all you have really here is Huntington. Mm -hmm. um, and so, just to add more wrestling to the South is awesome. And when I spoke to the administration here, and when I spoke to other people involved in the program, they were all about growing the sport of wrestling. Mm -hmm. And and I'm all about that as well. And if I and if I could come leave my footprint here and and be the be the leading horse for other sports within maybe Alabama, more more schools in Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, just more sports to start adding wrestling. I would love to be the face of that. I'd love to to be. The, the person that makes Montevallo succeed and then for other schools to be like, Hey, I want to follow in those footsteps. I want to bring wrestling because they're bringing this many people here and just showing that the kids in Alabama and the kids in the South are really interested in wrestling and really want to take that next step. 
And not only that, but if you look at if you look at the landscape of Alabama wrestling, their best wrestlers are having to leave the state. Yeah, they're they're all leaving the state. And from the conversations I've had with uh, with a lot of the kids I've reached out to, and a lot of the coaches, they want to stay here. They're proud to be from Alabama. They're proud of their roots, and they want to represent a school that that is within their roots. And so I think the the school with Montevallo adding, it's just, it gives a, a better opportunity for the kids in the South to, to stay close to home and still compete. Yeah. And I, I think actually you hit the nail on the head, the opportunity. I mean, hunting is, is great. It's nice to have them in, in the backyard as well, but we're talking about one program. Now it's two programs. Right. The more opportunities we provide the kids from Alabama in the South, the better we are as a sport. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, I was looking at the timeline in May, the announcement came out in August, mm -hmm. you're hired as the first coach. Things have, they've moved quick. Um, you know, what is, uh, you don't start wrestling an actual season until next season, 23, 24. Mm -hmm. So what does it for the, for those of us that are novice, like, I mean, I've been around wrestling for a long time, but I've never built a program from, from the ground up. What does the next 12 months kind of look like for you in building a program? Behind the car wheel. <laughs> um, <laughs> essentially on the road, um, going and finding the, the next young athletes that want to come and be a part of something special. And that's what I tell all the kids I'm talking to now, all the future recruits I'm on talking to is we want you to come here and be a part of something special. Um, it's inevitable. Montevallo is going to be great. Um, and in five or six or 10 years, this first set of student athletes that are going to come in the door when we're competing for national titles and we're bringing home team trophies and regional titles and things like that. The kids that come in this upcoming year get to say, I was a part of that. I was the foundation. I was what helped build that. And so for my next 12 months is just being on the road, um, introducing myself to all the coaches and, and the student athletes in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, just all the Southeast and just showing them my vision of what we can be here. Uh, and so obviously we're not going to be wrestling until the 2023, 24 season, but just on the road, on the phone and just making sure that we're getting in the right individuals to help us succeed on and off the mat. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that um, you and I had a conversation with about that was off of this, and I wanted to bring it to this conversation, this, uh, this interview was, um, we have a tendency to get hung up on on this notion of D1 wrestling and that sort of thing. Montevallo is a D2 school. Huntington's a D3 school. Life's over in, in Georgia and NAIA school, that sort of thing. Can you talk about the value of, of a D2 program and why sometimes it's the best fit for even, mm -hmm. you know, these top kids? Right. So I'll, I'll go kind of a little bit into my personal story. When I was in high school, I was, I was so D1 focused, like, a lot of kids are. I, I had success in high school, and 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 I believed that I was D1 material, and I w and I pushed and pushed and pushed, and I eventually went D1. I went to UNC Greensboro, uh, in North Carolina. They ended up dropping the program, and after that, I was kind of lost in where I wanted to go, and so I ended up transferring to UNC Pembroke, which is a Division II school. And I can tell you, just from from personal experience, that was the best decision I ever made in my life. Um, I can tell you, at least from the Division II aspect of things, it is amazing. I love all the coaches in Division Two, all the athletes, just the 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 way that everyone in Division Two wants the sport to grow. Mm -hmm. You get to Division One, it's all about winning. And don't get me wrong, in Division Two, we're all about winning as well. But there's not a single Division Two coach I can't call up and they would drop drop the hat just to, to answer a question I have or to help me out in any way possible. And so the, the the community within Division Two is amazing. We all want to win, but we all want to make the sport grow. And so we're going to help every program in, in any way possible to help us succeed. That way we have better competition. That way we we have better representation. So when, when you look at it, even at the Division Three and AI level, a national title is a national title. An right. All-American is an All-American. At right. the end of the day, you put in the same work as a Logan Steber, as a Tony Ramos, as a, as a Thomas Gilman. I know Thomas never won a national title, but he put in the work to win a national title. And he's a right. multiple time All-American. We're putting in the same amount of work here. We're, right. we're not skipping out on workouts. We're not skipping out on, on weightlifting. At the end of the day, a 45 pound plate here is a 45 pound plate at Iowa or Oklahoma State. We're putting in the same work. We're putting in the same dedication and we're getting the same results. We're, we're still on the NCAA. Matt, at the end of the year, we're still on the NCAA podium. Right. We get the same 
trophies. We get the same everything. The only right. difference is it just doesn't say Division One on it. Well, and 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 honestly, you know, D two schools are are sometimes it's uh, you know the school is smaller. You know, so mm -hmm. your class sizes are smaller. Your your ability to inter, you know connect with maybe the professors is at a different level than you know you walk into Penn State, and I'm sure that there's a ton of kids in your calculus class. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I, uh, so, so that's another thing that I don't think a whole lot of pay, people pay attention to was mm -hmm. that, is that, you know, the athletic opportunity still exists. You're just in a, the school is, a, is smaller is, you know, you have a different kind of an experience as far as that goes. Oh yeah. A funny story about that is my cousin um, went to Virginia tech. Um, and uh, he was telling me in his psychology class that they all had to buy like a little, like a little clicker. And it had like A through D on it or something like that. And to take attendance in class, you had to click the certain letter of that day or whatever it was. And for the test, it was up on like the big screen in the front of the class. And it was all, um, it was all uh, multiple choice. And to answer the question, you used your clicker and it went to a computer. So at the end of the day, if you didn't feel like going to class, I'm going to toss you my clicker and be like, hey, click me into class today. Right. And, the teacher, and to the teacher, you're just clicker number 121. But right. with division two schools, your, your name. I remember every professor at Pembroke that I went to knew me personally, knew, knew my story, knew where I was from. And here at Montevallo, it's the same thing. They're going to know who you are. And the great thing about that is if you start skipping class, I find out. And I'm not opposed <laughs> to going to your dorm and walking you to class. Right. Um, but the, the professors are more invested in you because they want to see you succeed. succeed. They want to see you graduate. They want to see you take that next step. And they take pride in that. And so you you start getting into your major classes and you're anywhere between 10 to 15, maybe 20 max kids. And you're not just a number. You're you're an individual to that professor and you're, yeah. you're somebody that they that they really, truly care about. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I that's one of the things I try to communicate when I have conversations as well is that, you know, it's it's just that a different environment. So I want to pivot a little bit to. You were a very successful collegiate athlete. Um, I think mm -hmm. you were what a four-time All-American and a two-time champ. Um, yes, making the transition to to coaching, you coached some some great kids. Uh, in fact, I think off mm -hmm. the top of my head, the most recent one was Isaiah Royal, who at Newberry, yes. who um, people in the South know because <laughs> he's from Georgia and things along right. those lines. So, what is it? Um, what's the approach that you take to take a kid who? is a good athlete or a good wrestler in high school and make them that elite uh, in college? Just, just teaching them the, the right lifestyle that they need to live, teaching yeah. them the right, the right diet that they need to have, the right workout mentality they need to have, and there's the right workout schedule that they need to have coming in and making sure that they're going to have the right mindset to become a champion. Cause at the end of the day, you can have all the, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the mindset and you don't have the determination to get there, then you might fall short. You might not, but most times of the day, most times, if, if anything, you're going to fall short if you don't have the drive and the ter determination to get there. So just making sure that they, that they have the right work ethic, that they have the right work schedule, the right diet, the right, just the right everything to be able to succeed. And as a coach, that's my job to, to put them on the path. Um, and the, the famous sayings, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Right, I'm going right. to take you, to, I'm going to take you to the water. I'm going to take you to the lake that you need to drink out of. But at the end of the day, it's, it's up to you if you want to listen to me or not. And nine times out of 10, the ones that have listened to me are the ones that have seen success. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'm a high school athlete, a high school coach in, in the state of Alabama, not even the state of Alabama, right? I'm a high school coach or high school athlete, um, around the Southeast, that sort of thing. Um, you guys have a brand new program. How do I get more information? Uh, so go follow our social medias. Um, okay. We have an Instagram, a Twitter, and a Facebook. Um, I have a lot of people reaching out to me telling me I need to make a TikTok. Um, <laughs> that might be coming. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, but I have a lot of people be like, you need to get on TikTok. You need to get on TikTok. So we might be coming to TikTok soon. Um, go to our website, montevallofalcons.com. Um, more and more things will be posted on there about us. Or if anything, just reach out to me by email. Uh, okay. You can find my email on the staff directory. If anybody has any questions, well, and I can put it, I can put it in this, so people, okay. will, yeah. I, I, if that's okay. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, if if anybody has any questions about the program or about the the process of the program, just shoot me an email. We'll set up a time. We can we can have a conversation, and and I'm open to have anybody on campus that wants to come visit campus. I'm ha I'm I'm open to to meeting with anybody or talking with anybody that has any questions or wants to help support the program or just 
wants to know more about the program. Well, yeah. I want to be an open book with this place. So, um, uh, do you guys have a, like, I, I know some places have like a, uh, an athlete kind of questionnaire that they can fill out to, to, to kind of submit that I'm interested in that sort of thing. Do you guys yes. have anything like that? Go to our Instagram page and it's in our bio. Okay. I don't know if it's in our Twitter bio yet, but there's a post on our Instagram about it. It's in our Instagram bio. And if also you go to montevellofalcons.com, you can find the questionnaire there. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So last question is, um, focus on the next couple of months for you and for the program. What, yes. like, uh, what, what's, what's going to happen? What are we going to see? Um, you know, if I'm following on social media, what, what things are happening for you guys? Uh, we're going to, in, in the next couple of months, in a couple of weeks, we're going to start showing off what we have on campus through our social media. So you can get an idea of what our weight room looks like, what our track looks like, what our gym looks like. But then also you're going to see me on the road. I'm going to go to the Georgia Super 32 qualifier. Um, we're going to be at Super 32. I'm looking at a couple other tournaments to hit up. Um, we also have Prospect Day on October 1st. Oh, so okay. we're, we're doing it in conjunction with the with admissions. So it, for Montevallo or University of Montevallo, on October 1st, admissions has Preview Day. And what Preview Day is, it starts at 9 o'clock and you get a deep dive tour of the campus. It's 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 a better tour than you get from just an admissions campus or admissions tour. Um, and you also get to talk with admissions. Financial aid will have a table set up. Um, there will be a couple uh, department heads from from different departments in the university. So you get a, like a, an incredible deep dive on what Montevallo can offer you as an as a, as a student. And then we're going to do that as soon as that ends. Mm -hmm. We're going to feed them lunch. You get a, you get a T-shirt along with it, and then we're going to do a wrestling clinic right afterwards with quest with questions for the coach. So if you have questions about um, about the program or about scholarship opportunity, we're going to have a Q and a after the um, after the technique session. So what it is, it's going to be 50, 50 bucks a person. What that gets you is it gets you the deep dive tour of the, the university. It gets you lunch for the day and it gets you a t-shirt and then it gets you one on one questioning with the coach and technique. So bring your wow. wrestling shoes, bring your workout gear, bring questions. If your parents have questions for financial aid or admissions, it's going to be your one-stop shop to, to knock every question out about Montevallo as possible. Very cool. All right. So that's all on October 1st. Um, yes. And they signed up for that again. Is there a sign up on the website or something like that? So our website's getting our website. The, the sign up website is getting developed. It should be done okay. today or tomorrow. And okay. we're going to start blasting it out on our social medias. So okay. you go so on just there look for it. Yeah. Yes. Just look for it. You, you sign up on the website. Make sure you put your name, um, your weight class, your phone number, your email, your T-shirt size and things like that. There'll be there'll be um, categories on there that are mandatory to fill out. And then um, the sooner you sign up, the better. That way we can get a get a count of who all is going to be there and and get a better idea of, of everything. But the sooner you sign up, the better. And then, like I said, it, it's just your one stop shop to find everything out about Montebello. That's awesome, Coach. Well, I want to. I want to. I try to keep this, like as I told you, twelve to twelve to fifteen minutes, so that I don't right. go too long. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, I I hope that um, maybe we can touch base in in a few months and kind of see the progress you guys have made and kind of things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's fantastic. Congratulations on on number one taking the the head coaching job and number two. Mm -hmm. I mean, leading a program in Alabama. I mean, we're all super excited about it. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. And I, I can tell you now, I'm, I haven't been this excited for, for a coaching opportunity yet. And just the, the amount of support and the amount of, amount of excitement around the program has just fired me up to, to really want to get to work. Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. thanks coach. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.